Hey guys, welcome to Jackie's Reading Corner. I am Jack, or Jackie, and it's time for another Top 5 Wednesday. If you are new in Top 5 Wednesday, it is a good a good reads group created by Ginger Reads Laney, and she passed a long time ago. She passed the torch on to Sam from Thoughts on Tomes, and this is basically, if this is your first time watching my these my videos on this, it's basically a group on Goodreads where they give us a topic to do every Wednesday where you pick your top five book related of that topic. And this week's topic is your top five rainy day reads. Now I don't read specific books on rainy days so I kind of just pick books I think would appeal to people who specific read specific books on rainy days. And I just recently, first of all, I just realized most of these books on this list with like two exceptions I don't have them in my possession, and then I just spotted another one. So I'm going to share a six um, top book that I think would be good for a rainy day read. Okay, first is one, a book that I just finished, and that is Never Night by Jay Kristoff. And this book is A Grim Dark, which I personally feel like the fact that it has is grim dark and as dark in the title would make it perfect for a rainy day read. Um, it is about a girl, Mia Colbert, who her father is convicted of treason and is mur and is murdered by the government. Her mom is put in her mom and baby brother are put in jail. Her brother dies and her mom essentially goes crazy and eventually dies as well when Mia is trying to help her escape. So Mia trains to be an assassin because she's she wants to get revenge on her family because of course these are government officials, so she has to be a really good ruthless killer to get her revenge. So first of all, first she trains with the, this gentleman Mercurio, who is from the Assassins Academy known as the Red Church. I think I hope I'm not getting that mixed up with. Um, because there is another book that I have not read. Oh, okay, good. Because for a second there, I was wondering if I was getting mixed up with, um, there's that one book series that actually Sam knows the book series, has reads the book series about an assassin, a school for nuns that are assassins. And I thought for a second I was worried that, oh my god, what about this whole time? I'm, what if I'm getting it mixed up in that book series? The whole red church name. Um, and he, when she is old enough, he sends her to the red church to be trained. It is a ruthless, brutal story. There is a little, there is some sex in there. Um, you can't trust anybody. No one, Mia is reminded that no one is her friend. People die in this book. You know, they're not this, and they're also characters that you grow to like. And might even adore, love characters characters that you begin to love. So, and I think the fact that it's such a dark story about an assassin, you know, and it's like, and it's all, that is also fun, is perfect for a rainy day read. It offers some escapism. Now, of course, it's not the book for everybody because some people don't like this kind of stuff, but people who like this genre, I think this would be perfect book to read on a rainy day. Um, the next one is not one that I have in my possession because I gave it to my cousin and I don't know how to edit it so that images of the book will show on, on this screen. So, um, I am talking about Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This is a coming of age story set in the 1800s about this young woman, Jane, who her parents died when she was a little girl. Um, she is sent to live with her uncle, who loves her very dearly, but he dies, and she is raised by her aunt and cousins who don't like her and resent her being there because she's not part of their little family unit. And eventually she goes to school where she is dis a very religious school where she is extremely disciplined. It's very, you know, it's very harsh discipline to eventually at age 18 going to be a war be a governess to the ward of the rich Mr. Rochester 
and they immediately are taken with each other and have a romantic relationship. But of course, Jane, he's rich, he needs to find, you know, and there, there's a rich woman that's after him as for his, for him and his wealth. And of course, Jane is so young and is so not well off that there are constant judgments on their relationship. And then there's a little subplot, which I'm sure most people know about the subplot if you're familiar with Jane or whether you've seen the the movies, because there are quite a few movie versions that kind of ruins their relationship just a bit, just a tiny bit. It's a very gothic story. It's a romance. It's a classic. So if you don't like something like Nevernight, you might enjoy this. I mean, I think you would enjoy Jane Eyre on a, to read that on a rainy day. I mean, I think gothic literature is for whether either grimdark or gothic literature, personally, I think is perfect for a rainy day read. Of course, you also might want to read something light, like you might want something not so dark. Um, which leads me to my next one, also a fantasy, although kind of more towards magical realism, which magical realism, I feel like it's fantasy, but it's not like a fantasy world, or it's not like paranormal, although it's closer to paranormal than, than you know, the kind of fantasy like Nevernight or like Harry Potter, for instance. Although, well, although Harry Potter is considered low fantasy, because part of the book does take place in our world. But, um, and I'm talking about The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. This is basically a story about this young girl, Blue, and it's a young adult book. And she, she's, her family, all the women in her family, including her mom, are psychic. But she is not. The thing is, though, she has the, she does have some kind of power where she can amplify other people's powers. So Blue, her whole life, is told two things. To stay away from the Raven Boys, who are part of a, who are boys that are the nickname of the boys that go to this prep school, which I still never figured out how to pronounce the name of that school. And that she will, if she kisses, if and when she kisses her true love, she will kill him. Now, before that turns you off, from the, because I know there are a lot of people who get tired of the, that kind of, that kind of trope type story and you know and this does have a love triangle which although if you got any of you guys are like my friend that might turn you off completely or might put you in a slump because apparently I told my friend a friend of mine actually Terry from Florida I was trying to get her to read um Sarah J Mass's Akatar series but then thinking that I was doing her a favor by warning her ahead of time that there would be a sort of kind of a love triangle or at least the guy in the first book, spoiler alert, wouldn't be the guy she would end up with, our main character. But then, unfortunately, because my friend developed this, you know, she liked the guy in the first book. She, you know, she's, and it's, and I think it helps sense of Beauty and the Beast retelling originally. So she was kind of like, no, you know, it kind of put her in a bit of slump. And she still has not read the second book. I don't even know if she finished the first book. She might have, to her benefit, you know, to her credit, she might have finished the first book, and I just don't know about it. Because I've, at this point, whenever it takes her longer to read a book than me, then I don't even bother asking after a while, because it's like, I don't know how long it's going to take her to finish a book. And, you know, so she might have finished it, but then unfortunately it put her in a band of a slump. Because she liked, like I said, she liked that first guy, but she does not realize there's things about that first guy that make him unlikable. You pity him, at least. You know, of course, most people don't even do that. Most people think it's, they can't even be, can't pity him because just, he went too far in their mind. But there are those, that other group of fans of that series that feel bad for that character. And they pity him and think he just needs to learn and grow and that he, avenge, that he just, him and Freya did not belong together. So, unfortunately, and, but she has not got to that point where she sees this guy as, has realized that this guy is kind of an abusive jerk and controlling. But anyway, back to the top five wins today, or in this case, top six, because I got a six book to show you guys. Um, but anyway, the Raven Cycle, in this book, she does one of the very things that she's told not to do, which is she comes into contact with a group of Raven boys. 
um, Gansey. Got my message that said friend I just talked about. So she just, that dinging sound was her messaging me because I was like that in yesterday's video. Because my phone is an Apple project the same as my laptop. So I, it, the instant I can get my messages via my phone on my computer. It's just a little annoying sometimes because I constantly hear that ding sound. It drives me crazy. Um, but anyway, and that the character, the boys are Richard Gansey the third. They call him Gansey. Um, Adam, who is kind of the poor kid, has an abusive father, wrong side of the tracks of a kid. Got a Scott to go to the school because on scholarship. There's Ronan. He's kind of the tough, broody kid who gets into a lot of trouble. From you know, it's kind of a punk. And then you have Noah, who's kind of the one who's, he's kind of, the, he's the nice one of the group. He's the invisible one. If you read that series, that's like a perfect term for, for his role in the, you know, if you read the series. Um, and, and of course, the love triangle is between her, Adam, and Gansey. But the main thing, which is the main focus, like, the, in fact, the, really, the love triangle is a small, a tiny part of the story, in my opinion, is that she becomes, in, she finds out that they are looking for this mysterious Welsh king that, apparently his grave is in Virginia, where the story takes place, and that whoever wakes him up gives them a wish. We'll grant them a wish, but this story is so much more than that. It has a lot of magical realism and whimsy, and it's like a fairy tale. I feel like it reads like a fairy tale. Now, I know the writing style is not everybody. It's, it's, and it's kind of, I think people, it's, I think people have compared it to Lainey Taylor's writing a little bit, but don't take my word for that. Um, it's very whimsical, and sometimes it's a little hard to follow, you know? And I'm sure that for some people, as, um, some people, um, CC from Problems of a Book Nerd put it, you have to, you might have to read the book more than once to really appreciate and really get into it and figure out what's going on. But it's still such a whimsical, magical story. Like I said, it reads like a fairy tale. And there's a mystery to the, to the story. They're trying to find this Welsh king. And there's all this weird magic going on in their world. In their, in, in this little town in Virginia that's, like, affecting their, their mission to find this magical king that will grant them a wish. And, like I said, there's a bit of, ro there's some romance in there. And it's, it's funny and snarky. And there's interest, very unique magic in this world. Like, Ronan has the ability, one of, each of the characters in each of the books kind of has, like, a role in their quest. And... Ronan, one of his roles is that he can conjure things from his dreams. And it's something I think that his his father, a gift that his father had as well. And that's what the second book, because each book is about each of the each of the four characters. But the, so it's a really I like I like the power, his power, I think that's really cool. But at the same time, it wasn't my favorite. Which is what most people say, I believe, that his book, the second book, was not a favorite book. Although there's, now there's going to be a spin-off series, so I'm kind of curious about it. But it might be something that I would get at the library, if my library carried it. Because sometimes they don't always get, they don't get all the new books that just came out. They only get, like, some of them. <sighs> okay, so the next one is one, that was, oh, by the way, that was number three. So number four is one that I actually have. And that is another fantasy book. As you can, like I said, fantasy I think is perfect for a rainy day read. Next to mystery. And that is the name, the name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This is the first book in a trilogy about this man who, you know, it's his life story. And how he becomes a legend in this, in this world. Especially after a tra he experiences a tragedy in the beginning of this first book. And it's like this mysterious, he is currently, as is under a new identity, he works at a tavern, and this mysterious, this chronicle shows up at his tavern, 
and recognizes him for who he really is and asks him to tell him his life story. So reluctantly he offers, but he makes a deal. He's going to only tell him, he wants him to write it down to chronicle it, but he's only telling him his story within a period of three nights. And this first book is the first night. The second one is the second night, which I need to read that one. Although, now I'm nervous because one of my favorite booktubers, Murphy Napier, had just talked about this book and said she herself was personally disappointed. Now, I know that you shouldn't go by necessarily what booktubers, just because a booktuber that you enjoy watching feels a certain way about a book that you let, that you have, that you want to read, does not necessarily mean that's how you will feel about it. I um, mean, although she didn't hate the book. She liked it. She enjoyed it. It just was a little bit, like I said, a disappointment to her. But I'm going to read it. But that's another one I definitely need to read. So that's another one that's considered an option I'm considering to bring with me when we go see my sister. Although I, I always do this because there's really no point in bringing too many books with me because I will be mostly, I'll either, during my free time, I'll either want to get on the computer you know, I'll probably want to get on the computer, and then, you know, of course, I might, I might get myself to be able to read a little bit, um, but then, because my nephews, and they're so young, and still so cute, I want to play with them, and you watch them, and give them hugs and kisses, and everything, so, and even if I'm, like, want to keep to myself and do my own thing, and not want to play them in the moment, or they're being distracted, they're so cute, that you just, and also, you can't, it's kind of hard because if they're running around playing, they'll be making a lot of noise and stuff. I mean, like, and plus, they might get into get into things. Like, the younger one is now at that age where he'll get into every little thing. I mean, like, you have to put a child, it's basically the, the you know, the age when you have to put a child lock on every little thing. I mean, the older one, it's a little easier. He's gotten to the point where he will be perfectly content saying, you know, sitting on the couch and watching TV or reading a book or whatever. But it's just, it's it's hard when you've got little kids, whether you're the parent or, you know, grandparent or, or aunt. So, but anyway, but this is just such the, the store, like I said, I think, I feel like fantasy, the atmosphere of fantasy is something that is, like I said, I know I keep saying this phrase, but perfect for... A rainy day when it's dark and gloomy outside, you're just sitting there listening to the rain and it drums on your window and I think it's gonna rain again today actually, around four o'clock. So after I film this video I need to I probably need to think about going running. But I might do one more video to kinda of update you guys on my reading. Um but it's just it's the story is so magical and not as whimsical I wouldn't whimsical I wouldn't describe I wouldn't wouldn't be the word I would use to describe this one. More like fantastical. But it's just and it has another it has one of my favorite tropes. Trope that both I mean a trope that is the magical school trope. I'm being to really like that magical store school storyline where where our main character is a teenager and they go to a magic school and they have the different teachers and learn about and study magic. I've always been a fan of scholarly characters, like particularly in fantasy. I always found that really interesting because it's a way to learn information but without getting like without it turning into like an info dump or you know like a unique way of learning something. Oh, I would, in, like, in a TV show or movie, you kind of go back for those actors to play those characters because then they have a lot, a lot of times those characters have a lot of lines and huge monologues that they have to memorize. Like, you know, um, Stuart Anthony Head on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, he was that character. Alexis Dezenoff was the character in Angel, the one who gave us all the information. Um, the Doctor could sometimes take on that role. Um, or I say more than sometimes. You know, that just, that would just, and then you get that a lot in, like, the Star Trek universe, particularly in the next generation, because I haven't seen the original Star Trek. Um, I like Gotham as a character like that. It's no scholarly character. I mean, the closest to scholarly character is probably, like, 
in the comics, in the cartoon, I know the car- the anime show was the one where we got we were introduced to Harley Quinn, and I know that she was a psychologist. I would love to, you know, I was, I sometimes I think about original characters that I would create for that show, but at the same time, it's very hard because you don't want to create something that sounds like something already existing in the Batman universe. But anyway, um, back to, I'm getting off topic. So yeah, I just, again, I think fantasy books, especially these big epic chunky ones, are perfect for rainy day reads. Okay, so the last one, well, the second to last one, because yes, I'm only supposed to do five, but I got one more I want to show you guys, um, is Carrie by Stephen King. I, I try to mix it up a little bit and not put the same type of books, like, I don't want all these to be fantasy, though most of them are, with the exception of Jane Eyre, in this particular book. And that, like I said, it's, it's Carrie by Stephen King. And this, I mean, in fact, I think a lot of, a lot of Stephen King's books could be rainy day reads, like the one I just read, my first Stephen King that I finished this year. Revival could be a rainy day read, The Shining could be a rainy day, rainy day read, but I think horror is one of those, horror and mystery and fantasy are perfect for rainy day reads, in my opinion. Um, but I picked Karen because it's one of his not-so-long books. I mean, it's really a fast read. Although I could, I guess I could have chosen Salem's Lot too, because that's I think that's a fast read as well. Um, but anyway, Carrie is basically about this girl, this teenage girl who develops kinetic telekinetic powers, and I think it's basically implied that she develops them because she became a woman, like she had her first menstruation cycle, and she gets made fun of by her peers because she's freaking out, and all these girls. You know, they're, they know it's, they know when they're, when they're going to start their, they know about that whole cycle and everything. So they kind of laughed and mocked Carrie when she experiences it herself. And then she has this ultra religious, religious, crazy mom, controlling mother. In the most recent version, she is played by Julianne Moore. And when Carrie develops telekinetic power, she finally snaps when she gets invited to the prom as a cruel joke. And she loses control and kills a lot of people, including her mother, when she goes home after killing everybody in the school. And it's been, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Never Been Kissed before. It's a 90s movie starring Drew Barrymore. Um, and there's, you know, she's this undercover reporter finding out about teenagers today. And she was, you know, when she had her own high school experience, she was all shy and awkward and just humiliated at, you know, at, in high school, so she's forced to go undercover and try to, you know, it's like her second chance to be cool, and by the end of the, and, you know, it's towards, it's the climax of the movie, and she, for a while, she finally became popular, and basically ditched the one friend that she made, one genuine friend who was kind of a nerd like she was at the school, but then, the uh, the popular girls that she ends up being popular group she ends up part being part of they humiliate they're about to humiliate the other girl and Drew Barrymore's character sees this and stops them and does this whole speech about how you know yeah you're you have this reputation in high school but when you get into the adult world that won't matter and you have to figure out who you are it's a beautiful scene a heart wrenching scene it's one of my favorite monologues in that whole movie and um. But anyway, her brother, who, to help her, goes undercover as well as a teenager with a reading comprehension of a teenager, apparently. And she, you know, she reveals to everybody everything, and she decides to leave because, you know, she's all upset and flustered after what all this that happened. And her brother makes a joke about, oh, I thought I was gonna, she was gonna be like Carrie and kill us all. I thought that, that, was, that was a funny reference. And there's actually another reference in that scene that I just got. I just realized this when I saw it on TV the other day, which is there's a scene where the their prom theme is famous couples throughout history, and there's a there's a couple there that dresses up like like Mary and Joseph, and the couple goes over to 
one of them, the, the Mary, the couple goes over to the table where, like, Drew Barrymore's new popular friends are, and they're like, sorry, this seat's taken. And, you know, they walk away, and, you know, she's like, it's just too bad for them. I, I just thought that was so funny. I don't know why I never really got that before, but I just noticed that scene. I mean, but anyway, so the six... The sixth book that I wanted to suggest here that I think would be perfect for rainy day read, the bonus book, is Vicious by V.E. Schwab, which just had a sequel come out, actually, at the end of last year, Benge Vengeful. Yeah, I think it's called Vengeful. It's either Vengeful or Vengeance. No, I think it's Vengeful. Um, but this is basically about these two college guys who discover... The, that they can develop sci they can develop superhuman powers if they have a near death experience and they do just that they both develop these powers like one of them can heal himself so in a way he's like Wolverine so he's kind of immortal and then the other one can inflict pain on others or can absorb their pain I don't I'll have to reread the book um but then you get to 10, it, but then the book also covers 10 years later and they are arch enemies because something happened back when they were college, they were college students. And this whole thing that developing powers just blew out of proportion. And the one who either can inflict pain or can absorb pain, actually no, I can't, I think, actually no, it's that I think he can inflict pain but he doesn't feel anything. Um, he ends up in jail, and the other guy is on this vendetta to kill anyone else who has powers, because he feels like he's the only, he feels him to be godly, and that he's the only one who, de who deserves these powers. This is such a great book. First of all, I would love to read comic books, but I'm, you know, because comic graphic novels specifically are either just as expensive, if not more expensive, than a novel... It's hard for me to get into comic books. And I'm so used to reading a novel that even though now I have, you know, the graphic novel Elfquest, which is really cool, by the way. Again, I'm doing <laughs> recommendation, Elfquest. Um which that's this one. And then I have two Good luck. It's really cool. It's kinda you know. It's basically these elves and their lives and stuff, and there's, you know, it has, it's like more, it's magical and mystical and fantastical. There's a little sci-fi in it because their first generation of elves in this story were originally aliens that came to Earth. Um, which I have mixed feelings about because I hate when people get sci-fi and fantasy mixed up. Um, but... And then I also have some, a couple, two Batman graphic novels. But it's just, it's hard for me to get into it because, I mean, I don't, I have no problem when I read it because I have read a little bit of both these, of all three of these. It was great. I enjoyed it. It's just, it's hard for me to just want to get back into it, have the desire to read it because I'm so, you know, I, novels, I want to read novels. Um, but don't worry, Terry, if you're watching this, I will eventually, okay? Um... But this is like a super or a villain story, but told in a format that I'm used to, that I that are that's easy for me to read and to get into. Which I want to read more books like that. But this is like again dark. You know, it's a super villain story, and I just think, like I said, it's the dark elements are good for rainy day reads. Now, of course, there are some people who would prefer to read more fun rainy day reads, like a cozy mystery, which I almost did put on this list. But I've only read a few. Or something like fanta a more fluffy fantasy like, you know, Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow. Okay, now that I've finally finished this top five Wednesday, or top six Wednesday, I should say. Um, if you liked this video and didn't mind my constantly getting off topic and rambling, please give this a video a thumbs up subscribe if you hadn't and if you are interested in doing top five Wednesday whether you want to join the group or not I will post the link to the Goodreads group below and um 
I would love to hear in the comments below what are your favorite rainy day reads. What are books that you, or even if there's not specific books, what books do you think will be perfect to read on a rainy day? I hope as always you are enjoying your reading and I will talk to y'all later. Alright, bye!